Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to upload your own images into Cricut Design Space. This video is a part of my Cricut beginner series that I'm doing, uh, so don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any new videos. And if there's anything specific that you guys would like to see, please leave a comment down below and I will definitely look at those and base my future videos off of them. Um, so let's jump right into it. The first thing we're going to need to do is actually have our image. So whether you're buying a package from Etsy or if you're grabbing it somewhere from the internet, um, you're going to need to save it to your computer. So once you have that saved already, I'm gonna play with this one over here that I have. Um, you're gonna wanna locate it so you know exactly where you're going to need to grab that file from to upload it into Cricut Design Space. So mine is seahorse.jpg. We'll go into in another video the differences between SVG or JPEG. You will see um, a lot of the file types will either be JPEG or a PNG or an SVG. Um, there are benefits to using an SVG file, which I will discuss in my other video. All right, so let's head back over to Cricut Design Space. Now we are going to upload our file. So we want to use the upload button that's located right here. And this is where you basically upload anything into Cricut Design Space. So you can see it has some files there already, but we're going to upload a new one. And here you could drag or drop the file directly from wherever your file is located. Um, or you can browse to actually find the file and then load that in. I'm just going to browse. Here it is. Now, once you load it in, um, Cricut Design Space has recognized that this is a JPEG file, which has given me some options to clean it up before I load it in. Usually if it's an SVG file, you won't be prompted with these options, um, but we are going to clean it up a little bit. So I usually select the complex one down here between these options. Uh, this allows me to retain the most details. Um, you can play around with these a little bit, but this is the one I usually use just because I do want to manually clean it up um, based on with what I'm working with. So I'm gonna ahead, go ahead and hit continue. And you'll see here, now I'm prompted with some more options. So these are newer, um, compared to a few years ago, uh, functions that Cricut has put in. And it's pretty awesome that they keep upgrading these things and improving on the functions because these weren't here before. <laughs> so they've got a background remover now. Um, the one that comes free with you without Cricut Access, you can basically click on anything that is the same color. So in this case, we have this white background here behind the seahorse. And I'm just going to click on each section. And you can see that it's removing that quite easily. Now, why do you want to remove that? Well, if we didn't remove that, then it would be cut out as a rectangle which is not what we want. We want this seahorse shape to be cut out um, and for us to work with that. So I've removed the background on this piece here. There are other options down here. Um, if you have Cricut Access, this could automatically remove it, which could save you some time. And this is also great because when you have a more complicated background, um, so something like if you're trying to remove uh, a grassy scene from a picture, of your family. Um, this is where you would try to utilize utilize that a bit versus this one here because when when you have more colors and it becomes more complicated the backgrounds are a little more difficult to erase. Uh, so you can play with that. You can also play with this tab down here. It says more options. So when you click on that this will adjust the color tolerance. So that basically means that it's going to kind of adjust to uh, how how much color it wants to remove based on what you select. So if I selected a higher color tolerance, um, it would try to remove more fine similar colors to the one you're selecting. And if it had a lower color tolerance, it's kind of the opposite. So if there was like a blue and a slight, slight, slight shade of darker or lighter blue, um, it would uh, it would remove basically anything kind of close to that. 
You can also reduce the colors here to simplify things. So if you had something that had 20 different colors, but let's say you only needed five, um, that could help with that as well. So this gives you some options for when you're playing with um, your image to clean it up a bit. So it's perfect for you to use. So in this case, we can also preview the cut image. So when you click on that, it shows you the silhouette here. Okay, so you understand exactly what you would be cutting in this case. Um, and you will see when I go to apply and continue, I am given two options. One is the cut image, which is basically a silhouette of my image. And the other is a print then cut image. Um, so this allows me to print it out of my printer and then feed it through my Cricut and they would cut it out basically kind of like a sticker style. Uh, so you'll notice here that there's no option right now to actually separate it as separate cut layers. So I wouldn't be able to, you know, cut this pink part out and then on pink vinyl or, or, or cardstock and then cut this out on like a green, blue cardstock, etc. On uh, mobile, that actually allows you to do that. So if I was to upload this image on my phone, I am now actually able to separate those layers and Cricut does have some functions put in. So it's not perfect, but it is pretty decent for creating kind of your own SVGs based off of a JPEG file. If this was an SVG file, then it would likely be able to be in parts, but because it is a JPEG, we have to clean it up quite a bit. I mean, another option you could do is if we were to go back to what we were doing before, you could technically load this in a few times. And then let's say you wanted the pink here. You could remove all of this green, right? So you'd have to load this in a few times to kind of create your separate layers, but you could erase all of this and then save this, right? as a cut image. Again, you can see here, it's not perfect. So we would have to clean that up a bit, um, but you could save this as a cut image and um, do that separately. So you load it in a few times and do the separate layers and then save all those layers that you would then load in. So you could make your own seahorse in this case to have those separate cut layers. Oops, I just got rid of that. Okay, so in this case, we're going to save this as a print then cut image. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit upload. And you'll see that's my library now. So I'm gonna select that and I'm going to go to add to canvas. And that's gonna load that right into Cricut Design Space for me to work with now. Now, remember again, I cannot cut this in the several layers unless I was to load it up on my phone for the current mobile uh, multi multi-layer creation tool. Um, or if I was to kind of go back and create multiple layers myself and then load all those in and kind of stack them. But this is how we load files in Cricut Design Space. You can see that there are tons of possibilities. Um, and, and yeah, I hope you have fun playing in here as well. So I hope you liked this video and I hope you found it helpful. Um, Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any new videos. Until next time, bye.